Hey everybody, it's Stolly Carr with HBCU Game Day, NCAA Regionals this weekend. I'm in Morehouse. They are the number one seed taking on Florida Southern. But before we get to those highlights, let's start with an all Panther matchup. I'm talking about Claflin, Clark Atlanta for the fourth time this season. One will win, one will go home. T'Challa versus Killmonger. Timothy Christian, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Ooh, that was nice. Jaleel Charles leaks out from the defense and Claflin up in the first half. Anthony Williams on the comeback and the long ball. It's a one point game. Damian Davis, another CAU senior, 24 points on the afternoon for him. For Claflin, that's Benjamin Williams. His friends call him Trey. He has Claflin up 34-27 at the half. Second half, I see why they call him Trey. Check out Williams from downtown. He had 15 points on the afternoon. Downtown for Clark Atlanta, uh, those doors were closed for the most part. The Panthers, five for 24 on three-point shots. And for the second time in seven days, Claflin over Clark Atlanta, 72 to 61 this time around. Claflin advances to the second round. They'll play number seven seed Barry, and the season is over for Clark Atlanta. Other D2 games on tap today in the Atlantic region. It was number one, Virginia State hosting and getting a win over the CIAA champions recently crowned the eight seed Virginia Union. Your final score here, Trojans 81, Panthers 76. Okay, a little spoiler alert here. We're getting ready for the Morehouse highlights. Get your blood pressure medication ready. Take your aspirin, do what you need to do because it's going to test your heart. Morehouse and Florida Southern University. James Walker, he comes out of the gate strong for three. And then it's Walker in the paint. It was a back and forth game now for the first 10 minutes, but Walker in fuego. Shortly before the half, Keyshawn Jacobs, he hits a three here. The crowd is into it. They're loving it. Let's get a little closer to the floor. Tony Evans, hey, he's fast. Speed wins. Morehouse up 46-35 at halftime. In the second half, the lead would swell to 21 points at one point. But Florida Southern just easing back into the game very slowly, but things look okay here with 325 to go. Jordan Wallace hits a three. Morehouse up by 11. The lead is down a bit, but still double digits. But then a turnover here. Miss free throws there. And somehow Florida Southern gets back in this game and they tie it up at 96 with under a minute to go. Final seconds of regulation. Florida Southern could win it here. Shot no good. Put back attempt is blocked. <laughs> Oh boy, could have been a foul there. Referee swallows his whistle. We are going to overtime. Miss free throws. We told you about it. Here's the story for today. Morehouse 10 for 18 at the line. Florida Southern shot 27 for 32. You see the difference in a tight ball game. Tyrius Walker had 23, two of them right here in overtime. But every time that Morehouse scored, Florida Southern would come right back with answers. So let's get down to 24 seconds in overtime. Tyrius Walker splits a pair of free throws. So after that, Morehouse up 97-96. Tyler Smith only had two points all day for Florida Southern. None bigger than these two points. Retaking the lead. We'll just keep the video rolling here. 14 seconds left. Another chance for more Tyrius Walker in Forbes Arena. We've seen his magic before, but this time it's a charge. But it's still not over. 
Morehouse intentionally fouls Florida Southern. They miss both free throws. Three point seconds left, but the Maroon Tigers can't even get off a shot and they fall. They were up by 21. They lose by one in overtime. The magical season comes to an abrupt ending. As you saw the crowd tonight, there's never been a crowd like that in, in, uh, in Morehouse in, in the playoffs. We've been in the playoffs before and they never had a crowd like that. And like I said, it's just so disappointing to my players and it's so disappointing to me that we did not deliver tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I'm hurting to the core, you know, uh, to, uh, the, the coach, Arthur J. McAfee, who the floor was named after I really wanted. I was wearing his ring, his Final Four ring that we won when I was an assistant coach because I really, really wanted this game in honor of him. But uh, as he says, uh, when I was playing for him and I was an assistant coach, uh, you got to get over it. Life goes on and you got to make sure you grow from what hurts you. So what a heartbreaker for Morehouse. The number one seed falls to the number eight seed after a big, big, big lead that they lose. But the party rolls on here on the fast break. Let's go up to Norfolk, Virginia. Steven Gaither with highlights from the MEAC Championships. Tali, what's going on? It's SJG, and we are at the MEAC Championship game where North Carolina Central has just upset top seed Hampton University. This is the game coming into today that not a lot of people gave the Eagles a chance to win. Hampton had come in with 10 wins in a row. North Carolina Central is a team that is young. Our coach Hogan talked all year about how he's got these freshman guards and they're making him go crazy. But uh, he was able to uh, pull this one out. 71-63 was the final score. The Eagles really dictated the pace uh, from start to finish of the game. Hampton never really got that groove that they hoped that they would get into as they were hoping to leave the MEAC uh, with both titles, the men's and women's. And so uh, that's what I have to say. Here's what Coach Bowen has to say about his victory. Yeah, because it's the underdog. I like, you know, that's that's where I feel comfortable being the underdog. This guy's been the underdog all his life. That guy's been the underdog, so you kind of embrace that role. We came in as a six seed, and some people are written us off, and you know, they didn't believe in us, and honestly, they probably shouldn't believe in us. But we believe in each other. That's all that matters. I told these guys from day one. Look, the only thing that matters is these guys in the locker room, and everybody else. They'll come and go, but. Just winning this, it hasn't sunk in right now because we're on the natural high, but in 48 hours, you know, we'll get a chance to really enjoy uh, this moment, man, because we've created the standard at North Carolina Central, and I'm proud because these these guys, along with the other guys in that locker room, they are proud of that all right, so you guys heard from Coach Pope. His guys are going dancing again. Uh, last year they had a, a senior-laden team. This year a totally different scenario. And Coach Pope might have coached his finest game yet that I've seen him coach uh, over the past couple of years. So uh, it's a big win for North Carolina Central. They're going back to the NCAA tournament. Uh, by virtue of their record, no one would be. Everyone is expecting them to uh, play in the playing game. Uh, we'll see what happens. They had that last year and they lost. Maybe this year will be different. But either way it goes, an exciting finish uh, for the Men's MEAC Tournament. Uh, Hampton will not be their representative to the MEAC in this last MEAC season. They are uh, going, sailing on, going bon voyage. So I'm going to go back and uh, see if I can find some more players and some guys to talk to. But right now, I'm going to toss it back to you in the fast break, Tyler. Let's head out west to the SWAC Championship. Dominique Monday was on hand. Some great photos here in the women's game. Grambling State over Southern. How about that? That's a dream matchup, right? Grambling wins at 72 to 68. Shakila Hill, 27 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double there. It's the first SWAC championship for the Lady Tigers from Grambling in 19 years. Last time they won, Juvie was taken over for the 9-9. Let's go over to the SWAC men, Texas Southern. Look, I wrote them off. A lot of people probably did as well. They had a up and down season with probably more downs than ups at one point, but they have risen from the ashes this year. They win it over UAPB 84 to 67. Trey Jefferson, how about this? At one point kicked off the team this year or suspended indefinitely at the very least. He gets back on late in the season. 15 points tonight. 
tournament MVP honors, and Texas Southern is going back to the NCAA tournament. Well, that's a wrap for Saturday night's fast break, but the party will continue on Sunday. We'll follow Claflin University and see if the Panthers can make it to the championship round of the South Regional here in Atlanta. For HBCU Game Day, I'm Tolly Carr. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.